I discover, discovered that fintech then, probably very similar to now, is you don't have rules necessarily. I mean, there are rules. I mean, there's obviously ways to do things, but there weren't these strict rules like being a doctor and going to med school. with Quantopian. Quantopian helps people all over the world solve today's hardest investment challenges. We're here on another episode of Women in Fintech and I'm with Leslie Newman who's a director at Thaxit. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Can we start by you just telling us a little bit more about exactly what you do as a director at Thaxit? Exactly what I do. That's <laughs> always an interesting question. Or whatever details. <laughs> uh, I'm actually director of product strategy in our content and technology solutions group, which is a big mouthful. So let's call it CTS for further uh, for further reference. And what I'm doing now is really leading a lot of our Open Faxit initiative, which is really about opening up a lot of our data and technology and solutions to uh, a broader audience beyond the workstation. And so what exactly does that entail? Now it entails a lot of planning, a lot of meetings, a lot of motivating, <laughs> and uh, I guess I look at my role as very much somebody who can see the big picture but also understands how to execute and get from A to B. That's great. So uh, my challenge is always trying to almost work against the hype and say <laughs> hype is good, but how do we actually get there? Okay, got it. And how long have you been in this role? Uh, well, I've been at Faxit for almost 20 years, and my role has been a variation on this, I would say, since I got to Faxit. Okay. Uh, I actually was in the great position of being able to sell my company to Faxit. Uh, we were Faxit's first acquisition, mm -hmm. so I kind of came in with the, uh, the idea of being able to offer my expertise at a level that pushed us in new directions, maybe sometimes before we were ready, but wow. um, my role has always been kind of seeing the big picture and, uh, and helping to track how we're going to get there through reasonable, pragmatic yeah. execution. That's exciting. And what was your company that they acquired? Uh, the name of our company, another mouthful, Innovative <laughs> Systems Techniques, known as Insight, and uh, we had actually de developed some, uh, some software, probably a little bit ahead of its time, that... Uh, captures a lot of where we are in a, in a modern world, being able to analyze large quantities of data, currently known as big data, <laughs> but um, really into the analysis of information uh, in ways that were unique, uh, packaging for delivery that didn't always have to come through the workstation model. And how did you start that company? Um, Probably just being really, really naive and young <laughs> enough to think you can do anything. Yeah. Um, I stumbled into this what we would now call fintech. Mm -hmm. um, probably in the mid to late 70s, I was um, actually hanging out with my parents and some friends of theirs, and I was still in college at yeah. the time. And uh, one of the women was part of this relatively new company or new division in a mm -hmm. company called Timeshare. And it was really about subject matter expertise in the financial area. And she said she had bought, the company had bought some software from a gentleman who was a one-man company. Um, and probably overextended. So she yeah. just suggested I give him a call. And I did. And he um, hired me part time to help him get out of all the overextension. So I actually started out as a technical writer. Wow. And uh, that was writing about the software and trying to figure out how to explain to users something that I didn't even understand. Wow, interesting. And so you were already in fintech in the, the late 70s. Yes. What was fintech in the late 70s and how has it changed? Um, what I probably didn't realize then was how new it was. I said it wasn't called fintech per se, <laughs> but it was just new and it mm -hmm. felt just very much um, like I had come home. Like I said, I stumbled into yeah. it, but the, uh, the opportunity there quickly became I'm trying to write up some feature and it didn't seem right to me. So I would write it up the way I thought it should be. And I'd go to my boss and he'd say, yeah, that makes sense. And he'd do something magic and, <laughs> and suddenly it worked that way. Yeah. And uh, little by little, it was an opportunity for me to say, what about this? He'd say, well, you go do it. And, you know, I <laughs> discover, discovered that fintech then, probably very similar to now, is you don't have rules necessarily. I mean, mm -hmm. there are rules. I mean, there's obviously ways to do things. But there weren't these strict rules like being a doctor and going to med school. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
I think that's probably the thing that stayed most the same. It's really hard to describe what your job is yeah, or what all the jobs true. are, but there's a lot of structure in what you do and there's mm -hmm. problem solving and puzzle mm -hmm. solving, uh, which really appealed to me. And I think the industry has grown a lot since then and there are a lot more jobs and people and more formality around it, but I don't think it's lost that creative, that, that combination of being creative mm -hmm. plus structured. In, is that, in building solutions. Is that what draws you to it? Absolutely, absolutely. And when when do you think it like really took off? I mean, now you say fintech, and I feel like everyone's like, oh, that's that's the buzzword now. When did you see that take off? It's probably happened in iterations. I mean, this overnight success of fintech has probably mm -hmm. iterated. Um, <clears throat> when the PC and the spreadsheets started to become available, all of a sudden it made it possible to put a lot of power into users' hands, yeah. not only end users, but more and more online users at, at clients, enterprise. Um, I would say in the 2000s, in the last five okay. to 10 years, mm -hmm. we've really seen uh, an industry form around it that has much more formality than, uh, than what it was 20 years ago. And so have you seen a lot of growth, especially in like your team at, at FactSet in the last five to ten years with that takeoff? Absolutely. I mean, when I joined Faxit, we had a small company. We were 12 people. Faxit was a big company with 300. <laughs> uh, Faxit's now 9,000 people yeah. worldwide, wow. many, many offices, mm -hmm. and um, it's a completely different opportunity than it was when I joined 20 years ago. Yeah, I bet. And so what did you study in college that led to this? Um, I started out as a combination math and literature major. Uh, I went to a school up the road, MIT, and <laughs> discovered pretty quickly that math was very abstract, even the, applica uh, the applied math track. But mm -hmm. there was this area called management science at Sloan that actually is probably where the data science and data mining and all those courses would be yeah. now. And I just got hooked on, on, uh, on that part of it, where you were using data, analyzing data, learning about models and algorithms, and that's where I found my, my sweet spot. Um, went on and combined that with finance, mm -hmm. and um, who knew it was going to be the in combination these days. Yeah. Was that common back then to com um, combine that with finance? I feel like even now in college, it's still not totally that big combining math and finance, it's slowly growing with all these quant firms. Yeah, I don't know that it was common, um, but certainly if you find a track that's about data, finance and you know market research are two big areas, and those were two areas that, that we were very strong on. So it just happened naturally. I don't think I hooked onto the finance part as much as the information mm -hmm. analysis part. Finance is something that, if you're really into data, and I'll admit to being a data geek, um, <laughs> You, you, there's just a lot of interesting data, and it's not necessarily regular data. Yeah. I mean, you know, IDs, splits. There are things that you really have to understand about how data all fits together. Mm -hmm. So finance is just an, an obvious area. Not, yeah. not corporate finance as much as the quantitative analysis. That yeah. piece of it, which, uh, which is highly analytical. Mm -hmm. And how about um, like in high school, going into college? Did you already know then that you wanted to pursue math, or when did you make that decision? Uh, I was always. I always like math, you know, the math team, the puzzles, things like that. I don't think I actively ever made a decision to do this. I think I more actively didn't fit the mold of all the other kids who were the, I'm going to be a doctor, maybe a lawyer. If you look at the kids who were graduating in the top of the high school class, they all had an it they were going to be. Yeah. And none of that appealed to me. Um, so I don't think that I said, oh, maybe there's this thing called fintech and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and that'll be appealing. I think the exposure to I said my, my first part-time job mm -hmm. where I could actually make something happen. Um, I think of myself as a builder, but I have no hand-eye coordination. <laughs> that kind of engineering skills mm -hmm. is beyond me. But with software, you could actually start with something that wasn't there. And, um, little by little, I found that that was, that was where the attraction was. That's great. And when you were in college, what was the ratio of men to women in the classes? Uh, MIT is an interesting place. Women have always been there, mm -hmm. unlike a lot of the other schools. I yeah. think we were probably about seven to one, seven okay. men for, for every woman. Um, in retrospect, I'm sure that there were a lot of classes I was in where I was the only female, but it never, I never noticed. I never thought That's about great. it that mm -hmm. way. Uh, I will 
fess up to having stayed in the all-female dorm, uh, <laughs> mostly because it was a little neater. <laughs> True. How about um, in work then? What has the ratio been and have you, you know, ever felt like there was any discrimination being a woman in this field? Um, probably, but felt it not as much as saying there are obstacles and mm -hmm. you know, you'll, you'll encounter all sorts of things and I'm sure it was there. I yeah. mean, and now I feel like I think about it a lot more than possibly when I lived through some of it. Mm -hmm. um, it was probably there, but I also know that if I want something and I want it passionately, um, you find a way to deal with your obstacles. Yeah. And gender isn't the only obstacle out there. There are lots of them. So yeah. uh, I won't say that I actually feel like I was ever held back because of, a, of being a female. You can find That's ways right. that it can hold you back, mm -hmm. but you don't have to go that path. Speaking of like tackling those obstacles for any young women out there who want to pursue a very similar career path or, or schooling path to you, what advice would you give them to overcome any of those obstacles? Um, again, know your passion. <clears throat> if, if, you, if you're looking for something where everything just is fair or makes sense, there are probably other careers that have more structure built in. So mm -hmm. if we look at where something like medicine has probably gone, there are far more women getting into the medical field yeah. and coming out as doctors because a lot of investment has been made in those programs. There's already structure there to attack that. FinTech is so still fuzzy in the boundaries that if you expect the society to put all those structures in, it may be a little bit harder. So have a passion for the, for the, for the area. FinTech is so broad that saying I'm a FinTech or not, no, there's <laughs> lots of areas. Yeah. Something rings true. Um, be, be intrigued by it. Yeah. And if there's an obstacle, let your passion actually dictate the path that you want to be on and say, well, I can fight the obstacle. It's, it's, That's great. it's there, but you can, you can find ways to deal with it if you want it badly enough. That's great. Probably my last question for you as, as the big picture person at FactSet, where do you see you know, the, the group that you're leading? Where, where do you see it heading? Um, really, the, the current buzzword, which again has been in my vocabulary for a long time, is the openness, really focusing on taking a lot of our expertise, packaging in a way that it's much more open, but doing it at an enterprise level. Mm -hmm. So um, you're probably aware that there's a, a big initiative underway right now between Faxit and Quantopian, mm -hmm. um, where the model that Quantopian's built around community and open mm -hmm. openness, uh, that wasn't available many years ago, and that's one of the big changes. But building out for enterprise and that next level of really sharing at a corporate level, yeah. that's something I feel like the, the, two, the two mindsets coming together, one plus one equals a lot more than three <laughs> in any quant book that I've ever read. <laughs> that's great. Exciting. Exciting times for FACET and yes. Quantopian, for sure. Very much. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Leslie. Well, thanks for having me. Enjoyed it. Thank you.